Hi guys, today we're at the Proklima headquarters here in Schwetzingen, Germany. We've had a two-day training and it was very exciting to see the whole research that they're doing, all the products that they're developing, and I'm happy to share what we've learned with you today. Today we're with Luther, so thanks for Hi. having us, Luther. Uh, firstly, could you introduce yourself and tell us a bit about the Proklima company? What's so special about the company? Yeah, uh, of course. My name is Jens de Herms. I'm the CEO of Proklima. I'm 19 years working for this company, so I followed all the development from our roots. We started as a company who was focused on the production of ecological building materials and especially for air tightness. This is where we're from. We still have the uh, DB Plus in our assortment, which was the first intelligent membrane in the world, uh, paper-based, working for more than 35 years securely in the buildings. And yeah, and, and I joined the company, of course, later in the beginning of 2000s, when we become more and more producer and deliver of products for high-performance buildings like passive houses. So we uh, developed a together with the passive house scene and with the passive house idea and of course the passive house is a very high quality house which is demanding high quality and long time working products yeah. and this is what we do so we are the experts for air tightness and wind tightness of the building envelopes so we take care about the building science and building physics of the component components which are protecting the house we are with Stefan who is a technical specialist at Proklima and today we're going to ask you a few questions to understand what is the company doing and why are these materials and uh, the whole product system so important in order to make energy efficient, healthy and comfortable buildings. There are several reasons why we should build a building airtight. Uh, first of all, we want to prevent thermal losses, heat losses, we want to prevent moisture damages, we want to prevent mold. I mean, we are, we are living in the buildings, uh, our children are living in the buildings and we spend a lot of time in this building. So a building should be healthy, a building should last for a long time and that's uh, a thing we ensure with the airtightness layer. Besides other building components, that's clear, but the air tightness layer is one uh, part of that. So basically we need the air tightness in order to really protect the structure, to avoid the mold, having mold in the structure, and also that we can really breathe fresh air, which is without mold and not coming in from places where we, that we wouldn't even touch with a, with a bare finger, let alone to <laughs> breathe in the air <laughs> from there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's on the inside, but then what about the outside? What, why do we need a membrane on the outside? Okay, on the outside, we need a wind tightness layer to prevent uh, wind th uh, flowing through the insulation layer which uh, could cause also uh, heat losses because every insulation material is working due to closed air chambers and so we have to prevent uh, air flowing through these uh, air chambers and that's why we need a wind tightness layer on the outside of the structure. Yeah, yeah. so it's like putting, putting the wind jacket on the, on the building yeah, and absolutely. to protect it from the wind. We wear okay. a thick pullover and over that a uh, soft chair jacket preventing wind to throw through this um, thermal insulation. Now I want to show you the different build-ups that we have here because it's very beautifully shown what the different build-ups are, what different materials are, and how the airtight layer is made. And I really loved what one of the builders here at Proclima said, uh, namely that to make a building airtight, to make the airtight layer, that's easy. But what's difficult is to make the connections and penetrations. And these are the parts that need a lot of detailed work on site. And now, firstly, we're gonna start with this build-up. In this case, we have massive timber and if we speak about COT, cross-laminated timber, COT is airtight. So COT doesn't need any additional airtight membranes or anything like that. But that's because the different layers of uh, the timber, they're glued together. But here in that case, uh, this timber is not glued. So that's using aluminum dowels and um, therefore it, the air will just flow through, the, uh, through this wall. That's why we have an additional membrane on the outside and that's an airtight membrane. And this membrane on one side protects the structure during the construction process so that the timber does not get wet. But on the other side it ensures the airtightness. Then on the outside of course we have the insulation. In this case we have wood fiber insulation. And then on the outside we have the render. The continuation of our insulation layer and the airtight layer as well is our window. But then the question is okay how do we connect the window to this membrane that we have? Well we do this with special tapes. It's not a normal tape not only because it should be airtight but most importantly about the tapes is that they should be long lasting and these tapes they they stick for more than 100 years so they they have a guaranteed adhesion of 100 years and in this way we can be sure that after
after 10, 20, 30 years, the building is still gonna be airtight. So that's one of the very important things. Then the other thing is here, that we always say that we want the water to go out of the building. And we don't wanna have any still water inside or we don't want any water to be collecting in some parts of the buildups. And that's why also here, even at the window sill, below the window sill, we have an additional tape which helps that even if some water gets into the seal or below the seal itself, this water will go out and won't get into the insulation material. And in this way, we protect the insulation material. Another interesting connection is here between the window and the insulation layer because the insulation slightly overlaps the window. In this case, that's a timber window because if it's aluminum, window from an energy efficiency point of view it doesn't really make a difference if we're going to overlap it or not because this is not going to reduce the thermal bridge but in that case it's a timber window so we overlap it with the insulation and then the connection between the insulation layer and the window itself we have this self-expanding tape and the goal of this tape is that even if the building moves or if there is some water that, that's going to try to get into here this is going to protect our insulation and it's going to protect also behind the window and then on top you can see that the same tape that we have here at the bottom for the air tightness, we have it also on the top. And then another interesting thing is if we look at the roof, when the roof continues, again, we have another airtight membrane, which is just below the, the insulation layer. And in this way, again, we protect the insulation from getting condensation into the insulation layer. So this was a massive timber wall, and that's uh, one without glue. So just out, and in this case, yeah, as I said, the air is just flowing through. That's why we need additional layer for air tightness. But now let's see a standard timber structure, just with insulation inside, and let's see how the airtight layer can be made in that case. Here is the timber structure, timber frame structure with insulation inside. We have the wood fiber insulation, the timber, and then in cool temperate, warm temperate climates, the airtight layer should be on the inside. In that case, on the inside, we have OSB. Most of the OSB materials, depending on the thickness, and depending also on the manufacturer, but let's say that in that case, we have the airtight OSB. That's our airtight layer. But then we have a few penetrations, we have a few connections, that have to be made airtight. And in that case, we have for the connections, we use the tape in order to make a long lasting connection. And at the penetrations, we have special components. So we have these, uh, these special gaskets, which can be used here for the conduits. It's like a rubber material or EPDM that goes very well all around the conduit so that there is not gonna be air flowing from the outside from there. Then we have the same thing, but then just for cable. So that's very useful on site because otherwise that these penetrations are gonna be very difficult to be solved. On the other side, another issue is when we have an external wall and when we have some other penetrations like for sockets, if we just penetrate the airtight layer, then the socket itself should be airtight. But a very easy workaround is instead of using airtight sockets, is just to have these boxes. So that's an airtight box, which we just basically, we make a single cut in the wall, we put the box, we tape it very easily, and then the cables go through this box. And in this way, we have the continuation of the airtight layer. Another difficult connection here that we can see is at the bottom. So that's concrete, and this here is the OSB. Concrete is airtight, the OSB is airtight, but what about the connection? What about these metal planks? They're very difficult to fix. And that's a new component which was developed by Proclima. The liquid applied membranes, they're airtight materials, they're materials which can be applied also with a brush. And here you can see how this has been sprayed. And in this way, that's again a very airtight connection, which is also a long lasting connection. So that's a very beautiful example. And another special thing about this specific construction is here where the first floor slab goes into the wall, because of course that's penetration of the airtight layer. And then the question is, okay, but how can we solve this? Well, the solution is that the, before putting in the first floor, we have to have diffusion open membrane, which goes all around this timber beam. And you can briefly see it here, the black membrane. And in this way, we have again, the continuous airtight layer. And even if there is a bit more moisture in that case, because it's a diffusion open membrane, this moisture can go to the outside. And then on the top, we see an airtight membrane, intelligent airtight membrane. The, the Intello Plus, and the goal again is to protect the, the roof structure and the insulation within the roof from any condensation and from warm air getting into the, into the insulation layer. Another thing that we can see is that there is the service cavity, 
and the service cavity on one side provides enough space for all the cables, conduits to go through. On the other side, it protects also the, the airtight membrane. And now let's go on to the next structure. And here we have the solid structure. So we can have concrete, we can have brickwork, any kind of solid material. Then on the outside, we have the insulation. So always it's better to have the insulation on the outside. And then the question is, okay, what is the airtight layer? The airtight layer, if it is concrete, then the concrete is airtight material. But then with brickwork, brickwork is a leaky material and it can be also, for example, concrete blocks. Well, in that case, the plaster, which is on the inside, this is what forms our airtight layer. And before I continue with the airtightness, just want to point out that in general, the windows, in order to make the most out of the energy efficiency of the building and to make the most energy efficient building, it's better to place the windows in the insulation layer. It's something that the Pascal's professionals are gonna cringe about, that the window is installed in the structural layer. There are a lot of ways to install it in the insulation layer, and that's how it should be in order to get the most out of the window. One thing that I wanna show is the tape here on the inside. So this tape is placed before, before the window is mounted, before the window is installed. We firstly put the tape, which is we have a tape on the inside, we have a tape on the outside. The tape on the inside prevents the warm air to get under the window and potentially to condensate here. The tape on the outside, it prevents the outside air to get here below the window. And that's why we need those two tapes. And then the benefit of these type of tapes that are used with these solid structures is that it can be plastered on top. And here, you can see that it has been fully plastered and you cannot see the tape. So there is no issue at all with that it's gonna be ugly or whatsoever. Another very beautiful thing that you can see here is this pipe, how it penetrates the, our plaster. And to plaster all around the pipe, it's almost impossible. So you need an additional component. In that case, we have a very similar component like the one used for the cables, which I just showed you. Here, this again, this rubber goes very well all along the pipe and then this tape, which is like a membrane, it is plaster on top, and so this becomes invisible, but the connection is airtight, and it's also gonna be long-lasting. And now, let's go to the last buildup that we have. So here we have a solution which is very good for renovations. Why? Because with renovations, very often, especially if it's a historic building, we cannot use external insulation. So in that case, we have to work with internal insulation. Moisture becomes even more challenging. Why? Because we can have some moisture which is already in the structure. We can have moisture coming down from the ground. We can have moisture coming from the outside. If we have a lot of rain, if we have especially stone or brickwork, these porous materials, they're gonna bring in the moisture to the inside. So in that case, if we use internal insulation, it's very important to allow for the structure to dry out to the inside. So that even if there is some moisture here that enters the build of the structural layer, this moisture can then go to the, to the inside. So that's why it's very important to use intelligent membranes. So membranes which on one side stop the moisture from the inside of the space to the inside of the insulation. But during the summer when we have reversed pressure difference, higher outside and lower inside to allow for the structure to dry out. Another thing that we can see again this tape which is used for the for the windows, how it is connected to our airtight layer on the inside. And all the connections, again, are very well taped. And in this way, we have, again, the continuous airtight layer. During these two days, we saw amazing stuff here around the, the headquarters. We saw all the research that you were doing, a lot of the products that you were working with. Could you tell us a bit about the more innovative and the newer stuff that are happening in the company and the newer products that you are developing? Yeah, innovation is a very important point for us. So for us, it's important to develop the products together with the people who are installing it. And this is one reason why everybody who works, or most of the people who worked at Proclima are, are of course engineers, but before they do their studies, um, they are worked practical on the building site. So I myself, I'm a carpenter and I still, still feel as a carpenter and I have a lot of fun to go to the building site, see what problems do you have there and how can you solve it. And one, one problem I've seen in the last years again and again is especially in the refurbishment sector, when you have areas which you want to seal airtight, but it's not possible to work there with tapes, or of course it's possible, but it's not payable. And so we are thinking, okay, how can we make this life easier for our customers to seal this um, airtight? And we developed this spray on membrane. So it's, it's a liquid membrane, which is delivered in, in these kind of sausages, when you feel how, yeah. how liquid it is. And then it's a question how you bring it, how to bring it on. You can brush it by hand, so you can do to do it with an airless gun, but airless gun is not so common with most of our customers and so we found this tool and adopt it to our needs. So this is a special manufactured tool for us where you connect it with air pressure and then you can simply spray it on. And on the other hand, you can 
use it as a filler, mm. so without any pressure. So when you have here maybe a gap, somehow you can first fill the gap and then over spray it. Because if you have, if you have big gaps, you cannot spray it because you spray through the gap. And so the filling is extremely important. And yeah, this is one of our innovating product, but I can tell you we are working on all products groups to make it easier yeah. to install and long lasting. This is the second thing when we talk about durability, the products have to last long. And yeah, to follow the new way of building houses. CLT is an example with the temporary weather protection, the Adhero line. And so we are developing on the white field, but only in our core sector, the building envelope. Great. Thank you very much and thanks a lot for, for having us. So it was, it was a pleasure for us and our team to be here and we're going to be happy to use the products and even come again for even more on-site uh, trainings. Yeah, thanks very pleasure much. to have you here. Thank Bye. you.